In this video, we're going to take a look at the 5th JWT lab on Port Swigger's Web Security Academy. The lab is called JWT Authentication Bypass via JKU Header Injection. In the first video, we went through an introduction into JWT attacks and covered the background information that's available on Port Swigger's Web Security Academy, as well as some of the tools that we can use to work with JWTs like JWT.io and CyberChef, Python libraries, Burp Suite extensions, and the JWT tool. So we're not going to go through that stuff again, but we will go through the background information that's specific to this lab. According to JWS specification, only the ALG header parameter is mandatory. In practice, however, JWT headers, also known as Joe's headers, often contain several other parameters. The following of particular interest to attackers. JWK, which is a JSON web key, provides an embedded JSON object representing the key. The JKU, which is a JSON web key set URL, provides a URL from which the service can fetch a set of keys containing the correct key. The KID is the key ID, and it provides an ID that servers can use to identify the correct key in cases where there are multiple keys to choose from. Depending on the format of the key, this may have a matching KID parameter. As you can see, these user-controllable parameters each tell the recipient server which key to use when verifying the signature. In this section, we'll learn how to exploit these parameters to inject modified JWTs signed using your own arbitrary key rather than the server's secret. In the last video, we saw how we can embed public keys directly using the JWK header parameter, but some servers let you use the JKU parameter, which is JWK set URL, and this can contain a reference to a JWK set containing the key. When verifying the signature, the server will fetch the relevant key from this URL. A JWK set is a JSON object containing an array of JWKs representing different keys. And we have an example below. So we've got a JSON object with a key called keys, and then an array of keys, which are also JSON objects. And this is the same information that we saw in the JWK header parameter in the previous video. JWK sets like these are sometimes exposed publicly via a standard endpoint. More secure websites will only fetch keys from trusted domains, but you can sometimes take advantage of URL parsing discrepancies to bypass this kind of filtering. Some examples of these discrepancies were covered in the SSRF section. So an example here is embedding credentials in the URL before the host name. So you have unexpected dash host is the username, fake password is the password, and then evil host is the actual host. So let's say we're only allowed to retrieve JWK sets from portswigger.net. What if we use portswigger.net as the username? And perhaps the way the URL is parsed, it simply looks for that portswigger.net after the HTTPS. And if it shows that that's correct, then it assumes it's trusted. But actually, the host might be evil host. Another example is using a hash symbol. So you can use this to add basically a tag like we have here at the top. So we've got SSRF with whitelist based input filters. And this anchor basically moves us down to this header. So again, you could have a hash symbol followed by portswigger.net, and maybe that's enough just to bypass the URL parsing. Another example is leveraging the DNS naming hierarchy. So let's say you own evil-host. You could register a subdomain that has portswigger in it, and then if the URL parsing is just looking for HTTPS portswigger, that'll be enough to bypass that check. And we have some other examples here. So for example, encoding characters to confuse the parsing code. All right, with that background information out of the way, let's take a look at the lab. The description says, this lab uses a JWT-based mechanism for handling sessions. The server supports a JKU parameter in the JWT header. However, it fails to check whether the provided URL belongs to a trusted domain before fetching the key. To solve the lab, forge a JWT that gives you access to the admin panel, and then delete the user car loss. So we've been given credentials as usual to go and log in with, which we'll need to do to get the initial JWT. Let's go and log into the website. So we'll go to my account and enter in Wiener and Peter. We log in, we can hit F12 to bring up our developer tools and then we'll just grab a copy of the cookie. We've also got an exploit server this time. So we're not able to use our own web servers for these ports for the challenges. You either need to use the exploit server that's provided or in some cases you can use Burp Suite's collaborator if you have access to the pro version. All right, so let's go and take a look at the Python script that we normally look at. We've got this demo py open at the moment. And the first thing we need to do is put in the JWT that we've just copied. So the script is quite similar to the previous one. You can see that we've got a JKU URL for this one though. So I'm gonna go and grab that. Let me change this to jwks.json. 
we'll grab this URL and then we'll paste that in here. We also need this public key, so we're going to generate the private and the public key in a second. But this is the same whereby we're just going to decode the token, we're going to decode the header, we're going to modify the user to administrator. And then we're going to open up the private key, grab all the details we need. We're going to generate our JWK. So this is a little bit different. Last time we just generated this and then embedded it in the header. This time we need to generate the key and then we want to just print it out because we're going to go and put that on the exploit server. That's where it's going to be grabbed from. I'm also printing this out with JSON dumps just so it's a little bit easier to read. And then we modify the token this time rather than using the JWK parameter where we embedded the public key directly we're of course embedding the URL instead. We also want to make sure that the KID in the header matches the KID in the payload. So that's something worth bearing in mind. And that's it, we'll just print it out, make sure it all looks good, and then we'll get the final token as well to go and paste into our cookies. So let me just paste in this command again, open SSL, we're generating a key, RSA algorithm, that's our private key. That's it, just run through that, and then let me grab the public key one as well. So it's just taking in the private key, printing out the public key and saving it to a file. There we go, we've got those two printed now and that should be it. Let's try and do Python demo. It's gonna run through, it's gonna tell us what the token was originally, what the header was originally, then what the modified token is after we've changed the username. And then here's the JWK. So I'm gonna go and copy all of this, take it to our exploit server and this is what we're gonna deliver as the body. One thing to bear in mind here, oh, I've printed it twice. One thing to bear in mind is that the content type should be JSON. So we're gonna change this to application slash JSON. We store it and then we can go back to our server. We're gonna go and add this JWT as well, which is printed down at the bottom. We make sure everything looks good in our header. It looks like it is. We've got the same KID on the JWK server as we do in the header. So that's good. Let's go and enter that in. Refresh the page, and we are now the admin, so we can go and delete the Carlos user. Okay, cool, nice easy one, but this time we're going to go and do it with the Burp Suite extension. I'm going to maximize this, and we're going to grab the My Account page, send it to the repeater, and in here we've got our two extensions, JSON Web Tokens and JSON Web Token. It's the second one we're going to use in this case. We could use this one, I think, but we'll just have to do quite a lot of this stuff manually because it doesn't have the same options here. So yeah, we want to go and change this. This is already shown as administrator now. Actually, what we'll do is go and grab one of our earlier requests. So let's get the one where we, where we were actually wiener rather than administrator. Send that again. Okay, we can't access the admin page now. That's good. All right, so JSON Web Token. We need to add a key here before we can sign it. So we'll do new RSA key. And that's it. Just generate. And we should just be able to take a copy of this. All right, there's quite a lot of stuff in this one. So I'm going to go back to the exploit server and we're just going to replace the key that we have here with the new one that we got. But we also need this KID that needs to match. So there we go. Let's store that. Let's go back to burp. Click OK. We'll go to our repeater and we want to go and update our KID with the new one. We want to go and update the user to administrator and we want to add the JKU parameter. So I'm going to add that here. We'll do JKU is equal to, I hope the lab time doesn't run out while I'm doing this. I'm going to go and grab this from the Python script that we had and we'll paste this in here. And that's it. We want to sign it. We need to not modify the header. Let's click on sign. Don't modify header. Signing key, we've only got one. So let's go OK and then click send and it's redirected us to login. That is not good. Let me try and take a copy of this JWT and see how it's looking. I'm going to paste this in here. KID looks good. Okay, it all actually looks quite good to me. Let me try and take a copy of that and just go back to the lab. We'll go and replace the cookie. Hit F5. And we still have the admin panel. Okay, that's weird. Why did it redirect us to login? Let me try that again. Sign. Should already be signed. Okay, click send but it just went to the login. Okay, so administrator, let's go and grab this again, KID. We paste this in here. We add the JKU and then just paste in the URL. Format it just in case that's any issue, but I don't think it should be. 
And then, yeah, let's try it again. Sign. We don't want to modify. Sign in key looks good. Okay. And then, do I need to do attack? Embedded JWK. No, this is a JKU. So, click send. Same issue. Let's try and follow redirection. Oh, the admin panel is there. Okay, that's weird. I don't know why that was a problem. All right, let's go back here. Let's do admin. Send. And there we go. All right, so it is the admin. Normally, whenever it redirects to the login, it means that it's not worked, that there's an issue with the JWT, but I guess I should have just verified that manually. Oh, by the way, we could have just used our Python script just to do all of this. So although we copied and pasted the JWT down here, we could have just actually added the request to make the request to admin and delete the Carlos user with the JWT that we've grabbed. But it's just a little bit of extra coding, and since we're looking at a couple of different methods to solve it, I don't think it's really required. Let's just look at the final method, which is the JWT tool. So we can do JWT tool dash H to bring up the help options. And if we have a look at our exploits, we've got one which is inject, not the JWKS, that's what we did last time. This one is spoof JWKS, where we have to provide the URL with dash JU. So first thing we need to do is get our token. What's our original token? Let me grab it from the Python scripts. So there's our original token. We will paste that in. And then we'll also do the exploit, which was s to spoof, and then dash ju with our URL for the exploit server. Paste that in. And then we can also tamper. One thing to bear in mind here is you need to make sure the KID is JWT tool, unless you've specified something else for the JWT tool config. So I'm going to change this to JWT tool and then we'll go to the next step. We want to change the payload. So we'll do two and then administrator and then zero. And this will give us a token. Notice what it has here though, is the JWKS file that was used. So it's not the same one that we just created. It's not using the keys that we created manually. So it's using this one. So we can just grab a copy of this and go back here. We'll store it. And that means that we can now use the JWT that it created. We'll go back. We'll change the cookie, we'll refresh the page, and we have access to the admin panel. We can go through and delete Carlos. Let's just go and have a look at that token as well. Have a look at it. So it was a JWT tool, which is what we saw in here. So if you go and update your custom JWKs to something different, you won't need to worry about that. You just need to make sure basically that whatever's in the JWKS is the same as what's in the header and the payload of the JWT. And in terms of remediation, it's obviously important that you only trust JWTs from JWKs from URLs that you trust, and obviously that you parse the URLs properly, make sure that people can't just register a subdomain with a similar domain as yours, or use the hash symbol, or use a username and password, or some of the issues that we saw there, URL encoding and things like that. Anyway, that's going to wrap it up for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you're interested in finding JWT vulnerabilities on real targets and getting some money for it, you can sign up for the Integrity platform, check out some of the bug bounty programs that are on at the moment, and put to the test some of the skills that you're learning on Portswigger's Web Security Academy. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed this video. Any questions or comments, leave them down below. Thanks.